Folks, I want to have a quick discussion about two critical developments, each of which are terrible, not only for old Donnie, but for his entire family, his adult kids in particular. And we have to focus in on the fact that they are crumbling. They are coming apart at the seams, and I don't think they're going to survive this. And they're all eventually going to start tearing in to each other, but right now at least, they're just under a bunch of pressure and they are cracking. And the first piece of this, we'll start with this, is just further evidence of the stupidity, the absolute desperate stupidity of Trump's Hail Mary begging at the Supreme Court, which will fail and might not even get a much of a delay. We'll talk a bit about that and then get into some of the newer stuff, which is a brand new analysis of the evidence, a sifting through, and somebody dug up brand new evidence that hammers Ivanka and her brothers and her dad and tears down major Maybe the only argument they had in the civil case. Ivanka, her brothers and daddy, they are sweating it right now. And senior FBI official Chuck Rosenberg. Chuck, good morning. So uh, what do you make of this latest motion uh, trying to get this all the way to the Supreme Court? Is it a dead end? Well, probably in the end, this isn't going to work out for Mr. Trump. Willie, let me explain why. First, there's no requirement that the Supreme Court even take this case. The issues are rather narrow and rather modest uh, and, frankly, somewhat uninteresting, uh, at least from a technical legal standpoint. Number two, Willie, even if they take the case, there's no guarantee that Mr. Trump wins. And then third, even if they take the case and Mr. Trump wins, we're really only talking about a process to review documents that's ultimately going to end up in the hands of the folks who need it, the government doing the investigation. So rather, mar rather narrow, rather modest. And I think in the end, Joe's instincts are right, uh, as they often are. I don't see the Supreme Court uh, overturning a conservative 11th Circuit on this rather narrow question. Just, Chuck, let's underline, though, how thin uh, ice uh, Donald Trump is on legally here. He is right now fighting. He, he's not even fighting a central issue. He's fighting something should, that should be basic part of their pleadings which is that these documents were declassified. That has been his argument. The special master said, okay, put up or shut up. If you declassified them, tell us when you declassified them, right? This is, this is, not, this is not a massive Perry Mason moment. It's like, okay, you declassified them, okay, tell us. <clears throat> yeah. And they're like, no, we're not gonna right, tell right you. Here. And they're actually fighting, and I cannot even believe the special master has embarrassed herself so much to say, oh wait, no, 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 no. They don't have to tell you whether they declassified them or not. And it's fascinating because, as you know, look at the statute, the classification status isn't in the end uh, even even going to determine whether he's charged or not. Yeah, that's such a good point, Joe, right? So one of the statutes at issue, one of the statutes on which the search warrant was predicated was the Espionage Act passed in 1917. We didn't have classified documents in 1917. The classification system came into existence after World War II in the 1950s. Uh, and so it doesn't matter in the end. The important thing, though, and I don't want folks to lose sight of this, is that the government, in doing its damage assessment right now, today, tomorrow, can still use the classified information it sees from the home. So that work is ongoing, and that's important. But you're absolutely right. When a judge asks you a question, it's not the same as sort of pontificating on television like I'm doing now. You have to answer the question. You have to answer mm -hmm. the question. And so when the judge wants to know whether or not these documents were actually declassified, Mr. Trump and his team have refused to answer that fundamental basic question. So on one hand, it doesn't matter in the end. The case won't turn on the classification status of the documents. On the other, I think their failure to answer the question is quite telling. So I just want to reiterate that, again, this bodes poorly in every case, but because we have to remember what the Trumps are doing is getting, or really not even getting, but further establishing a reputation for frivolous lawsuits at every jurisdiction. And judges talk and judges pay attention. And mark my words, all of these things are going to bleed into one another. And so lo losing in a civil case and losing in criminal cases and losing 
happen in, you know, all of these document related cases will have at least a cultural effect on one another. And right now, Trump's desperation with his own document case is absolutely being paralleled by what's happening in New York. And somebody did a deep dive analysis today, really dug up some brand new info that no one's really been talking about in the last little bit from Letitia James, which proves the only core defense Donald Trump and Ivanka and everyone else has been using. Because remember a couple days ago, I talked about how Trump was going out there making the argument that he actually isn't liable for any fraud or any sort of civil issues in the state of New York, because at the bottom of all of his reports, he put a little disclaimer saying, you know, uh, FYI, maybe there are mistakes in this information. And so because of that, me, Ivanka, my other sons, everyone else, we're not liable for any mistakes here. Do your due diligence, right? And everyone said that's ridiculous because again, it's not an issue of a mistake. It's an issue of a pattern of fraud that's being alleged. But it turns out that at least one of Trump's banks did suspect some issues, tried to reach out to Trump and his kids and his company, and they never heard back. It says here, they ghosted Deutsche Bank on answers about bad numbers. And this is from the Letitia James report. This is some brand new reporting. And it says the Trump's biggest lender for years has been German banking giant Deutsche Bank, which worked with the family starting in the early 2000s. But by 2011, the bank's commercial real estate division had grown leery of lending to them. According to James, the Trump then con the Trump's then convinced the bank's separate private equity wealth division, which caters to high net worth individuals to lend money for a slew of Trump projects, such as the Doral Cor Golf Course in Florida and the old post office hotel in Washington, D.C. To do so, the family allegedly made false claims about how much Trump was really worth. After media reports began questioning some of the basis of Trump's wealth and his assertions about his net worth, Deutsche Bank sent the Trumps a letter on October 29, 2020, asking about reported discrepancies. According to James, the Trumps simply didn't answer for more than a month. Finally, in early December, Alan Garten, the Trump organization's chief lawyer, sent a note back to Deutsche Bank basically saying that they had only just gotten it. And then they immediately responded with another more detailed request for info and a warning that Trump could be in default of his loans if he misrepresented his finances. On December 16th, Garten replied that he would try to get an answer for them. Deutsche Bank never heard back, according to James. That's the entire defense. Guys, Ivanka, Daddy, everyone, they're friggin' screwed, at least on this one right here. Because remember the argument, Trump with the disclaimer, which is basically like, if you feel there's any mistakes in here, let us know and we'll figure it out. To the best of our knowledge, everything is okay, but if you feel there are issues, do your due diligence. Well, Deutsche Bank tried to do their due diligence. They looked at Trump's numbers and they said, based on new info in the public, we got questions and we need answers and they didn't get it from Ivanka or anybody else or from daddy. It just, it's, it's ridiculous, guys. This is such a bad argument from Trump. So whether it's the Supreme Court for him or whether it's the civil stuff for his kids and for him, they are swirling the drain. My goodness, I can't wait to see them get flushed out into the Hudson.